that the continued expansion of this ownership group to as many people with as much money as possible is really important is this is a massive infrastructure project. Anthony, we finally did it. We did indeed. You don't know what we did, though. You're just like, yeah, we did. You don't know I'm what I'm thinking, talking about. I'm thinking you're talking about Dan almost being there and selling the team. No, 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 no. No, you're talking about subscribers. No, we didn't talk about subscribers. I know you're busy in there producing, but Anthony, we did it. It's finally infrastructure week. That's that's a big political nerd joke. That just went over my head. <laughs> yep. Okay. Good. Goodbye, Anthony. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we tried. Uh, the infrastructure needed in this franchise has been built up. I will give Jason Wright a ton of credit here. Um, he has done a good job of building up a lot of it over the last couple of years. But And Ron Rivera, to an extent, has built up some on the football side. But I think what Josh Harris is about to do is revamp this entire organization. Because when we talk about like an analytics department and you look at what the Sixers have done in the NBA where Harris is the owner and they are a leader in that with Daryl Morey, they were a leader with that initially uh, with uh, Sam Hankey and that front office. Like, they don't got that here. They have one of the smallest analytics departments in the league. And I know Rivera has leaned on it some to make like fourth down decisions, but there is a there are layers to the analytic movement within the NFL that are way, way, way deeper that this organization has not put the resources towards that can help. And it's going to take a coach, by the way, who's willing to to be involved with that stuff. And I don't know if Rivera is ultimately going to be that guy. He's been open to to changes in philosophy and learning more. And, and I'm not going to sit here and dump on Ron um, because it's not like he's completely co- closed minded, but it's just a different era of how to think about the game. And, you know, obviously there will be many coaches uh, or, you know, multiple coaches in, in Josh Harris's tenure. That is the nature of the NFL. Um, rarely do you have a Belichick who's in place for 20 years in one place, but there is a huge, like, internal in the football department, how the team is run, who is empowered, what kind of data is is uh, acquired and used. There's a whole infrastructure change that that's going to need to happen, and that stuff costs money. It costs human resources. Uh, it costs hiring very smart, capable, talented people and giving them top flight technology and equipment to do the things that they want. Then there is the physical infrastructure. The practice facility stinks. I know everyone wants to say the number one thing is a stadium. And you ain't wrong that it's high on the list. But I would argue the practice facility is more important. And the simple reason is you work at your home stadium 10 times a year. And not to say it's not really important because it's where your fans experience the game. It is a statement of kind of who you are as a franchise in a lot of ways. Uh, The Cowboys, like, we are the big, shiny leaders, so we built the -the state-of-the-art stadium that all other stadiums are trying to to live up to. And, you know, L.A. is like, okay, we see you, Dallas, and we're going to do it an L.A. way, and they build SoFi. Um, You know, Minnesota's built a stadium that's incredible, and they – their practice facility and the way they've done business is is top flight. Like who you are in a lot of ways is reflected in your stadium. The Oakland Raiders were a team that needed to move. (laughs) Now they're in Vegas. They do things a little differently uh, and they've got a sick stadium to show for it. But uh, not to say the Raiders haven't had some problems, but that's a different conversation for a different show. Um, Point is you're there 10 times a year as a football team to play games. Nine regular season games, one preseason game, or eight and two, depending on the year now with the 17-game schedule. You are at your practice facility over 100 days a year. Your coaches are there two to 300 days a year. You're there for every practice. You're there for every OTA. You're there for every, and now most teams, every training camp practice, including this one. It is your office. Um, I don't really know what the equivalent to other jobs is because there aren't a lot of jobs that practice one place or jobs that have practice in an events. I mean, I guess if you're an events team, if you build um, things for like massive trade shows, 
you know, your office space is really important. And then you, you take your, your show on the road to the actual event. Um, but there just aren't a lot of pl- jobs where like you have uh, this dynamic. Most of the time, your office is your office. And for a football team, the office is the practice facility and theirs isn't good enough. They do not have the space. Um, they have been knocking down walls to try to make better meeting rooms and they've upgraded and upgraded and, you know, they deserve whatever level of credit they get for continuing to try to chip away around the margins to make this thing better in the meantime. But it's that practice facility puts them behind in free agency. It puts them behind in what their coaches are capable of doing their nutrition and, and, you know, weight room and all that kind of stuff is limited they do a good job within their capabilities but like they just don't have the space to do it the way other teams do it which is better and especially when you've got guys that are used to coming in from Alabama or SEC Pac-12 ACC schools that have facilities that blow other pro teams that are good out of the water it's such a downgrade it's such a it's like oh this is my pro experience so that's going to cost money. But the biggest expenditure in terms of the infrastructure project, if you will, is obviously a stadium. And that's going to involve bureaucracy and political red tape. It's going to involve permits and all kinds of stuff before you get to the actual construction. So ultimately, the best thing that can happen is the most people get involved with the most money because the way you can blow through a lot of that stuff and get things done quickly and efficiently is by having the resources to do it. And it's going to involve a lot of cash a lot of financing and the more people you have to finance and the more people you have to put forward cash, the better. What's up kiddos. It's your boy Clinton Gates from ESPN. It's the Hoffman show on the team nine, eight. Tell your mama. I said, what's up?